section 5.4 factor norms, metric norms, and condition numbers. A norm or a factor norm defined on Rn is a function that assigns a non-negative number to each vector x in Rn and that satisfies the three properties. For all x, y in Rn, and lambda scalar, uh, this first one is the positive definiteness, and second one is homogeneity, and the last one is triangle inequality. Uh, we can define various norms satisfying these three uh, properties. The most common norms are p-norms and the maximum norm. For p-norms, for entries, take absolute values and uh, p-power and sum and for the sum, we apply the power 1 over p. For maximum norm, here we are taking the largest value uh, in modulus. After taking uh, the absolute values, and among them, we choose the largest one. Uh, the maximum norm is also called the infinity norm. Uh, now, two of the frequently used uh, p-norms are one norm and the two norm. One norm is simply the addition of absolute values of entries, and two norm is the square sum and power half. The two norm is also called the Euclidean norm, and we often use uh, without the subscript. That means that once you see norm without any subscript, then the default is the two norm or the Euclidean norm. Uh, let's see this example. X is given uh, from R5. There are five components. And we'll try to find the P norms. P is 1, 2, and infinity. Okay, let's begin with uh, one norm. Okay, x1 norm. That is, from definition, just addition of absolute values. So, the 4 plus 2 plus 2 and plus 4 and 3. So, that is 6, 12, 15. Okay, so we have 15 here. Now, how about two norm, x two norm? They're the same as half power, so it's a square root, and square, so 16 plus 4 plus 4, now 16 plus 9, so it's 20, 40, 49. Square root of 49 is 7. Okay. Now, the infinity norm, maximum norm, okay, that is maximum. So we are choosing the maximum value out of the absolute values of uh, the entries, 4, 2, 2, 4, and 3, okay. So the maximum is 4. Okay? So here, uh, one norm is the largest one, and infinite norm is the smallest one, and two norm has a mid value. In general, uh, we can prove these uh, inequalities. So infinite norm cannot be larger than two norm, and two norm cannot be larger than one norm once x is from Rn. So I ask you to prove uh, this inequality 
Yes, um, exercise problem. Matrix norms. For matrices, we can define also norms. A matrix norm on n by n matrices is a vector norm on the mn dimensional space satisfying these three conditions. Uh, the same conditions for uh, vector norms. Okay. Also, you can define various metric norms. Here, one example is the Frobenius norm. That is square sum of every entry and half power. This quantity can be computed by using this formula. First, we organize A and A transpose and take a trace. Tray, it, trace is the sum of entries on the main diagonal. And that is the definition. And you can get also in this way. And here, some other kind of norms are defined here. So it is called induced metric norm because it is induced from a uh, vector norm. Once a vector norm has been specified, so this can be any vector norm, then we can define induced metric norm based on the vector norm. Here, A metric norm is the same as maximum. Uh, maximum will be taken over x. Now, ax is a vector. So that the norm, this norm is a vector norm, only known vector norm. And also x is a vector. So that an ax vector norm divided by x vector norm among these uh, ratios we are taking largest one, that is the matrix norm. Here, on the denominator, we have x, that is for scaling of x, so that uh, this definition can be written in this way, just to take x such that norm, vector norm is 1, and for all x we uh, take here AX vector norm. Among them, take the maximum, then there is the same metric norm. That is a bit complicated, the definition of, uh, for uh, the metric norm, but it's quite popular norm. And it is called an operator norm or the subordinate norm. The operator norm is the most popular uh, name. Uh, here we see some theory. For all operator norms and the Frobenius norm, uh, it has this property and must be. Uh, because uh, if you uh, here divide by x norm, then we have that here, x norm, and over there, the a norm is largest among that one, so that always this inequality is satisfied. So we multiply just x over there to get the assertion. Now, same way you can prove this one. Mm. Metric product norm, of course, this is a metric norm, is bounded by uh, metric norm, product of metric norms of each metric. Now, one norm, metric one norm, and that means that we start with uh, the vector norm, one mm, vector norm, and now the definition is given in this way. So this is vector norm, is one norm. Okay. Now, that's the definition. 
this is a kind of a, uh, computation for the computation we put here. Now, for metric entries, for absolute value, we are adding along i direction, which means that for given metric, we take absolute values and add vertically, i direction, vertically, then we'll have uh, values, your yeah, sum for second column, another sum for third column, another sum, there are sums here. Among them, we are taking the, la the, the maximum. That is one norm. Now, for maximum norm, that's the definition. That's for each computation. Now, the summation is for absolute values of entries with sum in J direction. So sum here along each row with sum the absolute values. Then each row will make a sum. And there are n sum values among them the maximum will be the maximum norm, metric maximum norm. Now for two norm, if we start with uh, the factor norm is the two norm, then that is metric two norm. That can be gotten in this way. Take a transpose A and for that one, we uh, find the maximum eigenvalue and take a square root. Uh, we can uh, get the norm in this way. Mm, here, for two norm, now A transpose, we'll prove this one uh, later, but anyway, A norm, A two norm, and transpose two norm are the same. And also, if A satisfies this equation, uh, that is uh, called, uh, such metric is called a normal metric. For example, A is symmetric, then it is a normal metric. Then here, the two norm is, uh, that's among uh, eigenvalues, the largest one. But for normal metric, and the eigenvalues can be, um, so that I, some eigenvalues can be uh, less than zero, uh, so that here in modulus we try to take the maximum. So that is a true norm. Okay. Now here, uh, don't be confused with uh, this one and that one. For one norm, for computation, we are adding the absolute values vertically because that is one, it's vertical. Now we are adding horizontally for infinite norm because the infinite sign is about horizontal, right? Okay, so you can memorize them quite easily. If A, a square metric, is invertible, then we can define the condition number. Kappa of A is A norm times A inverse norm. And of course here, now, the norm mm, should be the same, so associated to the metric norm. So once you are using one norm for this measurement, then that is um, one condition number. If you are using two norm, then it is two condition number. So we say usually L1 condition number, L2 condition number, or L infinite condition number when the metric norm is along with L infinity norm, okay? Okay, A is given um, as in this metric, then we have A inverse, and A transpose A is, um, can be obtained in this way. 
I made this a inverse and a transpose a for your convenience. Now, let's try to find a one norm, a infinite norm, a two norm, and try to compute the L1 condition number. Okay, let's do that. Now, part A, uh, A1 norm, A1 norm is just from A, we are, are taking absolute values and sum vertically, right? Some of the absolute values vertically, among them, we are trying to get maximum, okay? From first column, we have two. From second column, uh, we are focused on this metric and the absolute values. And from second column, we have a five. And third column, again, we have a five. So that, that must be five. Right? Now, how about a infinite norm? There is a maximum of horizontal summation of absolute values, and that's five. No? First row, we have a five. Second row, we have a two and five again. And so that, that is a five. Okay. How about two norm? A two norm, that is from here formula. Okay, that is definition. Uh, it's not easy to get um, this maximum value. However, once we can get a transpose A, and if we can find the maximum eigenvalue, and for that one, the eigenvalue must be larger than or equal to zero. It's real and non-negative, so that without taking any absolute sign, we can choose the maximum eigenvalue of this metric. Okay. Okay, so here that can be decided from now maximum eigenvalue. So we have to find the maximum eigenvalue of that. Okay, let's try to find eigenvalues. A transpose A, okay, A transpose A, okay, I rewrite more clearly. Okay. That is a transpose A and minus lambda i. We start with that. We start with uh, the characteristic equation of the metric. That is now, and two minus lambda, zero, zero, and zero, nine minus lambda, and minus seven, and that is zero, minus seven, and nine, oops, that, Okay, here then must be lambda not seven. Okay, okay, here we have this is zero and uh, that is nine uh, minus lambda. Right? Again, this is a nine minus lambda. Okay, now we take the determinant of the metric, then okay. That is, uh, by some perfect expansion, you can get it. So here from this one, uh, we have two minus lambda, and that that will be the corresponding cofactor will be determinant of that portion. So that is the same as here nine minus lambda squared, ad minus bc now forty nine. So we have here two minus lambda, and then this one is lambda squared minus 18 mm, lambda, and 81 minus 49, which is here 32, right? Okay, so uh, that is the characteristic equation, and from here, now, lambda is 2, this one eigenvalue, and this one can be separated 
Okay, that is 2 and 16 and minus minus. Okay, so we have uh, three eigenvalues here. Lambda is from here, that is 2. Again, from here, again 2 and 16. Okay, that is positive 16. So that is the largest uh, eigenvalue of a transpose A. Okay, so we can um, complete the computation. Square root of the largest one is 16, so that, that is 4. Right. Okay, so we finished the part A. How about part B? Now, in L1 condition number is kappa 1a from definition. Definition we have that is a one norm times a inverse one norm. Okay, we already know a one norm is 5. Now, we we'll try to get uh, a inverse one norm. Okay, to get a inverse again. We try to add absolute values vertically. Among them, we'll choose the largest one. 1 over 8 is in front of the metric, so that only we consider uh, the additions. That is the 6. That is 8. That is the 6. So that here um, the maximum value will be A. So that condition number is 5. Okay. Okay, one may consider the infinity norm as the limit of p norms as p approaches infinity. Okay, that means that, okay, now let's uh, consider a vector in here R3. Uh, so we consider only three components so that x can be written, for example, x1, x2, x3. Then from this one, now x p norm is the same as now x1 after value p norm, p power, and x2 after value p power plus x3 absolute value of x3 p power and 1 over p. Right? Assume here x1 uh, is uh, largest, uh, larger than, okay, strictly larger than, for example, x2 and x3. Then maximum norm of the vector must be absolute value of x1. Now, for along with this assumption, along with this assumption, now let's see uh, this norm as p increases. Uh, x1 is the largest one, then this one will increase much faster than that one. For example, this is um, 5 and this is 2 then this one is much larger than that one. As p increases, this one is the dominated term, so that it looks like uh, it's almost the same as now x1 and p power, and p power, and we ignore this portion, basically, and now 1 over p power, so that now, that is same as uh, basically here x1, absolute value. So it is approaching to this value, which is the uh, x um, infinite norm, right? Because we assumed in this way. So you may assume that any entry, the maximum, you can get the same conclusion. That means that the infinite norm can be considered as the limit of uh, p norms as p approaches infinity. Okay, now we consider 
the induced metric two norm of the metric A. This is a special case. And once uh, we choose P norm, then the metric norm can be defined in this way. Yes, uh, for this vector 2 norm divided by uh, x 2 norm, among them we are choosing the maximum. That is same as also this one. Now for this 2 norm, we have uh, one more term identical. That is this one. We uh, multiply from the right um, uh, vector, then that is uh, now a um, vertical vector. Now we multiply here y transpose on horizontal vector so that it becomes a scalar. Now we are taking absolute value. So we are choosing here x2 norm and y2 norm are simultaneous one among these choices, x and y, the maximum scalar value is the uh, A2 norm. We can get uh, metric 2 norm along with this identity. So with that, we can prove this, uh, the properties of the metric 2 norm. And transpose of A, Two norm is same as a two norm, and now uh, here a transpose a for general metric a. Here two norm is the same as a two norm squared, and also the same a a transpose two norm is the same as a norm squared. Here the proof is given. Uh, if you are interested in mathematics, then you may try to understand uh, the proof. So you learn a lot um, out of this proof. Okay, that's the end of section. Thank you.